Welcome, this is Dr. G, and in this video, I will be going over all the exponent rules that you need to know for math at school. But I'm going to do it slightly differently than how you would normally learn this at school. And here's why. Is it just me, or have you ever felt that sometimes you feel good going into a test? You've studied your material well, you know your stuff, and then you see the questions in the math test, and you're just thinking, this has nothing to do with what I studied. Well, it's actually not the case. We as students just didn't learn the material in the right way. For example, I can teach you how to use every single tool out there. I'm talking screwdrivers, wrenches, drills, hammers, every tool. And then on a test, I can ask you to build me a house. Right? Although you definitely need to know how to use tools to build a house, just knowing what each individual tool does does not prepare you to build a house. This is the exact same thing with math. If you learn the rules and what they mean and all these individual components, that doesn't mean you can use that on a test because test questions are rarely going to give you hints in terms of which rules to use. Your teacher is never going to tell you, hey, here's a question in brackets as a hint. Don't forget to use this rule first and now use this rule and then use this rule. That's not going to happen. So on a test, you're on your own with your bag of tools, but you don't know how to use it. So my goal is after watching my video, when you go on a test and you see these questions, you're able to start off with not by thinking with the rules, but actually look at the question and think, what do I know here? What can I do? What can't I do? What do I have to look out for? Where's a good starting place? And then as you're working through the questions, then you might be able to think, ah, cool, I am using this rule here. Or, ah, nice, I'm using this rule here. Remember, you got this. Come on, let's go. So here is a list of the exponent rules in the order that they're usually taught at school. Keep in mind, if you're just learning exponents or starting exponents, you may not learn some of these rules. For example, the last rule here, the rational exponent rule, that's usually taught later on. But you know what? Since we're learning these anyway, it wouldn't hurt to know them now. This is the order in which I will go over the rules. Just one minor change, I'll be going over the negative exponent rule a bit earlier, and there's a reason for that. The first rule that we're going to learn is the zero exponent rule, and it states that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So as per the rule, three to the power of zero would equal one, x to the power of zero would equal one, 50.5668 to the power of zero would equal one, and one million to the power of zero, exactly, it would equal to one. Simple, right? Well, not so quick. Let's take a look at these ones. The two x to the power of zero, recall that the two is not in a bracket here, which means it's actually a coefficient in front of the x, or you can think of it as its own base with an exponent of one, which means it has absolutely nothing to do with the x to the power of zero. So it's really two times x to the power of zero, and this zero exponent only affects the x. So we know that x to the power of zero, that's gonna be one. So this question essentially becomes two times one, which gives us the answer of two. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. We have negative four in brackets to the power of zero. Remember, now with brackets, that means the entire bracket and everything inside is a base. And if that base is to the power of zero, that means the answer here would just be one. Next negative 3a to the power of zero. First of all, the letters don't matter. I could use whatever letters, x, y, z, a, it doesn't matter. But again, notice the similarity between this and the first example on the top. The negative three has nothing to do with a to the power of zero because it's not in a bracket. It's just a coefficient in the front. That means, again, this question should more look like this, negative three multiplied by a to the power of zero, which we know is one. So the answer here would be just negative three. Next, 
What about x squared minus x plus 4, all in a bracket to the power of 0? This might look intimidating, but we know that because this is just one big bracket and the bracket itself is the base, that means the entire thing would again be 1. Lastly, 0 to the power of 0. This is a funky one. This definitely does not equal to 1. Actually, there is no answer here, so we actually just call this undefined. All right, your turn. Pause the screen here and give this one a try. So how do we do this? We know that the first bracket with a negative 2 to the power of 0, this bracket is the base, so that entire thing becomes a 1. The x to the 4, that's fine, we're not going to touch that. The y to the 0, again, that becomes a 1. And the z squared, I'm not going to touch it. So our final answer here should just be x to the 4, z to the power of 2. The next rule I'm going to cover is the negative exponent rule. Now, usually this rule is introduced after you learn the product, quotient, and power rules, but I'm going to teach you this one first. And that's because in the quotient rule sometimes, you will need to use this negative exponent rule to fully answer the question, so it makes no sense to introduce this rule after. Now, if you look at this rule, you'll see that we have some weird letters here, but don't let that bother you. The B is just any base. So a base to the power of a negative exponent is equivalent to 1 over that same base, but now to a positive version of that exponent. Basically, what it's trying to teach you is that if you take the reciprocal or if you flip the base with a negative exponent, then we can turn that exponent into a positive. But I'm going to be honest here, this rule written this way is extremely misleading. It's confused more students than helped. So I'm going to do it a different way. So let's start with something like 2x to the power of negative 3. As you can see here, we have a negative exponent, which we do not like in math, hence the negative exponent rule. First step is always to turn this into a fraction if it isn't already a fraction. This is clearly not a fraction, so let's put this over 1, and voila, we have a fraction. Keep in mind, you can always turn anything into a fraction by putting it over 1. Once you've made it into a fraction, the next step is to look at the base with the negative exponent. Again, remember the 2 here has nothing to do with the negative exponent because it has its own base of positive 1, which is fine. So we're focusing only on the x to the power of negative 3 here. It's currently in the numerator slot, right? Is it happy there? No, it's not because it has a negative exponent. So all we have to do is to move it to the other side of the fraction. In this case, that would be the denominator. And it will be happy there. So this turns into 2, which we never touched, over 1, which was originally in the bottom, and then x to the power of positive 3. Notice the exponent is no longer negative because we dragged it to the bottom. We didn't have to move the 2 on the top. It was OK. It had an exponent of 1, and that's fine. Now, one last thing here. Do we really need this 1 in front of the x? Not really. You could leave it there. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you don't see it there, that's because 1 is a pretty redundant coefficient. So you can also write this as 2 over x to the power of 3. We have just applied the negative exponent rule. Let's now apply what we know about negative exponent rules and do this question here. So first off, just spot the guys that are not happy. 2 to the negative 1, not good. x to the 4, it's fine. y to the negative 6, no good. On the bottom, we have 3, that's fine. Remember, it's to the power of 1, that's fine. a to the negative 2, not good. b to the 3, fair. All right, so now that we've circled the bases that are not happy because they have negative exponents, all you have to do is to move them to the other side where they'll be happy. So for the 2 to the negative 1, we're going to drag that down. For the a to the power of negative 2, we're going to drag them up. And for the y to the negative 6, we're going to drag it down. So what we have now here, and be careful when you're doing this because it's easy to miss a few things. We have x to the 4 that was always on the top, never moved. And now we have a to the power of 2 on the top because, remember, it was a to the negative 2 on the bottom, and we moved it up. On the bottom, what we have is we have the 3 to the power of 1, never moved. We move the a, uh, the 2 to the negative 1 down. So we have now, and let's put these in separate brackets, show they're not the same, 2 to the power of positive 1 on the bottom. 
We had the b to the 3 that we never touched. And we also have the y to the negative 6 that we moved down. And now it is y to the power of positive 6. And to simplify this, there's not much we can do to the top. x and a's are very different. So we're going to leave them separate here. x to the 4, a to the 2. And that's going to be over, well, the 3 to the 1 is just a 3. The 2 to the 1 is also just a 2. And everybody's multiplying here. So 3 times 2 is going to be 6. Our b to the 3 and y to the 6 are just going to stay where they are at. Now, let's look at the same question, but let's pretend we didn't do it this way. Let's say we follow the original rule of the negative exponent law. So let's see what happens. You see a negative a 2 to the power of negative 1. Okay, what is that going to become? That's going to become 1 over 2 to the power of positive 1, right? We flip it. Okay, what about y to the negative 6? Nope, we're going to rewrite that as 1 over y to the power of positive 6. And on the bottom here, we see we have an a to the negative 2. That becomes 1 over a to the power of positive 2. So then what you actually might end up with is this 1 over 2 x to the power of 4 1 over y to the 6 all over 3 1 over a to the 2 and b to the 3 how does that make the question easier it doesn't and it's not your fault right you just remembered what the negative exponent rule was and you're now you're using it on the test but do you see how that doesn't help that makes it worse before we move on to the next rule, let's come back to the standard definition of the negative exponent rule, and let's use what we learned to see why it's written like this. Well, let's start with b to the power of negative e. First step, always to turn it into a fraction, so let's put this guy over a 1. Next is, clearly, the b is not happy because it has a power of negative e, so what do we do? We're going to grab that and move them to the bottom. Now, you might think, well, there's nothing left on the top. And that's incorrect because there's always something on the top. Who was our coefficient in front of the b? Well, if it's invisible, that means the coefficient is a 1. Remember, 1 is a redundant coefficient to show. So although we've dragged the b to the negative e down, it's not just an empty space on the top. It's just a 1. And that's how we have that 1 here. Some students would leave it as a zero on the top. Don't do that. That is incorrect. There's always a one there when you've moved everything away from the top. Continuing on here, you can see on the bottom, we have b to the power of positive e. That makes sense because we dragged the b to the negative e to the bottom, and now it's positive. What happened to the one down here, you might say? Remember, one is a redundant coefficient. You could put it there if you want, or you can just leave it without the one. So there you have it. That's what this negative exponent rule actually means. Two more examples here before moving on. Both of these are areas where you can make mistakes with negative exponent rules. Starting with the left, you see we have 1 over negative 2 to the power of 3. There's actually really nothing wrong here with the exception that perhaps it's better to put the negative sign on the numerator instead of the denominator because that's what we like in math. But for some students, it might look like this could be moved. What I mean by that is this negative 2 to the power of 3 appears not happy, right? Because of the negative sign. So from what we learned, you might be thinking, well, we can always just move it to the top. And this now becomes a positive 2 to the power of 3 over 1 or something. But that's wrong. That's wrong because we can only move these things to change the sign of the negatives if it's in the exponent. We can change an actual number from a positive to a negative number by moving it up or down the fraction line. That would be like saying, we're going to take the number of negative 2, put it over 1, and then we can drag this negative 2 down and make it positive 1 half. That's not the same. No way. The second example is actually different than the first in the fact that we can actually do something here. Our exponent of negative 3 is not good. Well. What students might do is put this over 1, which is good, and then they take the whole thing and move it to the bottom. And remember, when it's not happy on the top and you move it to the bottom, it's going to be happy now. So they think it's going to be 1 over positive 2 to the power of positive 3. Notice that both negative signs became positive, but only one of them should. Which one? Right. Only the negative 3 exponent would have became a positive 3 exponent when you moved it to the denominator. This negative 2, it has to stay as a negative 2. This negative sign doesn't become positive. 
So to avoid such a mistake, let's do it the way that we learned. First of all, this negative sign does not apply to my two to the power of negative three. This negative sign, remember, is just a negative one in the front, and it's just a coefficient or a base with a power of positive one. It has nothing to do with my two to the power of negative three, so it's actually being multiplied to two to the power of negative three. Now we can focus and zoom in on this part, right? We can say that the two to the negative three is over one, that's fair, and the two to the negative three is definitely not happy, so let's grab it and let's move it to the denominator. So we still have a negative one in the front multiplied by nothing left on the top, but there's still a one. 1 over positive 2 to the power of positive 3. And then finally, we can multiply the negative 1 with our numerator. And that is going to give us negative 1 over 2 to the power of positive 3. OK, I'm going to stop the video here. I thought originally that I could fit all the rules into one video. Um, but time wise, I think that's going to take longer than 40 minutes. And even I wouldn't want to watch a video for more than 40 minutes. I definitely don't want to compromise the quality and the materials covered in my videos for the sake of cutting time short. So I will be continuing the next set of exponential rules in a video somewhere up here. So if you like the video, remember to hit the like button. And if you really like the video, then I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. It will help the channel grow. And again, it will allow me to make videos to help you. As always, leave the comments, questions, or any topic requests in the comment section down below. And I'll see you in the next video.